If you're a Potterhead or uh, someone who's a fan of Harry Potter, you may have wondered, how do wizard genetics work? For instance, how would a squid be born to two wizarding parents? Or how would someone like Hermione be born to two dentists? Or how would some wizards be more powerful than the other, other wizards? Well, a biology student at the University of Delaware by the name of Andrea Klenotis uh, wrote a paper, a six-page paper, explaining how wizard genes work. And she actually sent it to J.K. Rowling. I don't know what J.K. Rowling thought of it. Um, but it's pretty interesting. I don't know if we should come at this from a scientific point of view, but more as a this is fun point of view, and this is uh, at best pseudoscience. So don't freak out, audience. Best <laughs> pseudoscience? There is no science to this. I said at best pseudoscience. I, I understand that this is a biology student, mm -hmm. and she knows a lot of biology terms and how things work, and the wizards look like people, and although they're fictional characters, she can apply her knowledge of biology and genetics to, to kind of explain how they might work, maybe. Still pretty stupid. OK, so disclaimer. Um, so how she thought wizarding, well, OK, when we were in high school, in, in all of our high school bio classes, we all learned about Mendel's pea experiment and made um, the Punnett square of, well, this parent has this dominant gene and this recessive gene, and this parent has this and this. So the, the probability of the child having this gene and this gene, OK, we get it. So what she did is she recreated Nicholas Flamel's no. uh, mandrake root experiment mm. to explain the same thing, but with wizards. E and that's the nerdiest joke you hear today. I think you made that up. Um, <laughs> but she made up all of this, so what am I going to say? Yeah. Um, so her explanation is that wizards don't have Mendelian genes. Um, OK. So they, it doesn't, it's a bold first move. It doesn't work that way for wizards. And that the wizarding gene is caused by a trinucleotide repeat. No, so, I'm, I'm sorry, that's triwizard repeat. Triwizard tournament repeat. No. Second nerdiest joke you'll ever Wrong. So it's a repetition of three nucleotides. Nucleotides are what make up DNA. And the way she kind of explains it is that the more of this repeat a wizard has in, in, in their, their genes passed on from their parents, the more powerful a wizard they would be. It's kind of like a cell mutation Along, that you would inherit along the lines of maybe Huntington's disease. And but with magic powers. But with magic instead of excruciating death. Right. And so people with high levels of this would be strong wizards. People with low levels would be a little bit weaker. Um, Just like midichlorians. Sometimes, oh, a, mu a gene mutation that causes that. And that, that explains how people like Hermione would exist. I mean, she, her, neither of her parents have the wizarding gene, the wizarding trinucleotide repeat, but she could be have a genetic mutation, and also, you know, maybe squibs would have have those a lower level, or maybe it just happened to some some wizards would produce a squib or a strong wizard or a weak wizard. We don't know, and that's how the genetics work. It also explains why there are very few black wizards, oh. and why they're all British. Dean Thomas is black. Yes, he's the only one. No, there's more. There's that, that guy. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Mundungus Fletcher, isn't he black? Um, the guy whose last name is Shacklebolt. What about, oh, is there like a Kingsley or a Kingston? Kingsley Shacklebolt. Kingsley Shacklebolt. Yes, he's I'm black. Sorry, that, there are two. two black wizards. Yeah. <laughs> Apologies. Thank you. 